praise out of glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rekakadash. That's Yahweh be the true name of the Heavenly Father in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai be the true name of our Lord and Savior. And Rekakadash being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone for bringing us this truth. Honors to the brothers pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. Shout out to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who's going to receive salvation from the hand of our Lord Yahweh Shai, while the other two thirds of our people are destroyed for now returning back to the Lord. So, this lesson, we back, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, but a conversation I was having with somebody, and I wanted to do a lesson on that conversation because the same conversation um, a lot of people have um, with people that's outside of this truth. A lot of unbelievers or people who lukewarm in this truth, they struggle with the same thing. Like, how do we know what we talk about is correct? How do the men of the Lord know they right? How do we know what we're talking about? But the title of this lesson will be, We Know What the Hell We're Talking About. And the scripture said that we would know what the hell we're talking about. And we're going to show that. The people just in denial. <clears throat> but the conversation was, how do we know that the world is about to end? How do we know it's about to end soon and not 10 years later or 30 years later? I said, well, because we look at the prophecies according to the scripture. We measure the prophecies by the scripture. The Bible is like measuring tape. And then, you know, um, as stuff happened, we look at it according to the scriptures. Like, this has came to pass, this has came to pass. Now, this has to happen. And not only does the Bible tell us what's going to happen, there's a timeline for it. When you're going down Matthew, the 24th chapter, all uh, that stuff is pretty much going to happen in order. But now we're going to start off with Matthew, chapter 16, verse 1. And the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desire him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? And that's our people, they hypocrites. You say you don't want to worry about the end of the world, but you worried about the weather. You said, well, the end is coming. We can't do nothing about it. So why wait for it or why look for it? Well, you can't do nothing about the weather either. So why do you watch for the weather? You watch for the weather so you could plan accordingly. That's with us in this truth. We watch the prophecies so we could be ready for the return of the Lord. Just like y'all watch weather to watch for the storm. Well, the scriptures will tell you that it's going to be a big storm when the Lord comes back. And that's a storm of nuclear missiles. Not only that, the return of the Lord himself is going to make the sky go completely dark. So that's what we look for. And, and that's what most things in life, we try to plan ahead. So us studying the scriptures, studying the prophecies, trying to get our spirits right before the return of the Lord, we just planning ahead, just like y'all plan ahead to know what y'all going to wear for the day, to what you going, um, what days you want to take off from work, um, what days you want to go on a vacation or take a trip. So you can look ahead of time to plan for trips and vacations and whatnot, but y'all can't look at look, look ahead, you know, for the signs that we at the end of times, which, which, which would be the prophecies. So everybody, you know, who feel this way, they're hypocrites. Y'all can look for signs in the sky for the weather, but y'all can't look for the signs that we at the end of times. And that's why in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it reads, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day start arise in your hearts. But the focus is the first part of the scripture. Because we have the correct understanding of the scriptures. The full understanding of the scriptures. And the Bible as a whole. 
we have a more sure word of prophecy. Now, this means we know what the hell we're talking about. And what's a more sure word that will we say is more accurate compared to the average person that we have a more correct interpretation of the scriptures and the prophecies and what's going to happen? Because a lot of people that in this truth, they don't know what they're talking about. And the things that they say, they have nothing to base it off of. They say, I don't think the world's ending right now. Well, what are you basing that off of? What clues or sign what clues or signs can you show me that shows that? Or some people say, I believe we're close. I think we like forty years away. You believe that based off what? Where are you getting this number forty years from? Or people will say, uh, what else do people say? People say pretty much a bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with the scriptures. We could say the end is coming this year. If it ain't this year, it's next year. And why is that? Because we could say it according to the scriptures. Because the very last few prophecies that will be happening in the last days leading up to the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai, they're taking place now. They're sort of being put in effect. And we're going to read this one more time to get on to the next scripture. We also have a more sure word of prophecy because we got the understanding of the scriptures. One and two, you do well that you take heed. Yeah, because we have a more sure word of prophecy, we're going to take heed. We're going to prepare ourselves and clean our minds and our spirits to prepare ourselves for Yahweh's return. And thus taking heed, that's because the prophecy of the scriptures is the light that shines in the dark place. Now, the dark place is the world, because Job 9 and 24 tell you that the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. So the whole world is in darkness right now. And this darkness is, doesn't, mean, doesn't, doesn't mean a spiritual darkness either. It, it, this darkness also means misinformation. Misinformation, incorrect information, incorrect doctrines, lies, deceit, deception. It's a web of darkness that's over the planet Earth right now. That's why most people are brainwashed and mentally destroyed. But these prophecies is a light that shines up in a dark place until the day of dawn that the day star rise in your hearts. So our next scripture is going to be Matthew chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 3. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what was they asking? What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So the end of the world is the Lord's return. And way back 2,000 plus years ago, they was asking the same thing that the people are asking now. And Yahweh shall answer the sinner to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And this goes out to everybody on earth. Take, take heed that no man deceives you. Because the man that's deceiving y'all mostly right now is Esau, the Edomites, the white man. For we go to verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So this is one of the signs that we will be at the end, because many comes in Christ's names. We have so many self-proclaimed teachers, pastors, evangelists, um, whatever other title they go by. They all claim to know the Lord, yet they don't know what he looked like or know his true correct Hebrew name. Not only that, they don't even know they don't even know twenty five percent of the Bible as well as well as most of these pastors. So if they don't know this Bible, if they can't make sense of everything in here or, or give you an overview of it, um, you don't need to be uh, studying under them. And what else would be a sign that we at the end? And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't we see that right now? We got a little small war going on right now with Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine being backed by U.S. And what's the rumors of wars? That the U.S. and NATO going to get involved in Ukraine to fight Russia. That China is going to help Russia. That um, Iran is going to bomb Israel. China going to invade Taiwan to kick the U.S. out of Taiwan. So the rumors are taking place right now. And that's why we go see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So all these rumors of wars, every rumor that we hear about, 
about a country invading or fighting another country, every single one of those rumors is going to take place. But just because we're hearing of these wars now, and the war has started, the end shall not come. Because other stuff got to come to pass. And what's got to come to pass? For nation shall rise against nation. So, so this is a massive race war, a purge, a riot, all hell breaking loose in America. And this hasn't happened yet. This will be like a total collapse of society. And this should be, I'm sorry, let me go up. And kingdom against kingdom. This will be the different countries and the presidents of these countries bucking up one at another, which we're seeing now. That's why Sloppy Joe and Putin going at it. Sloppy Joe <clears throat> and the Chinese president going at it. The president of Israel and all these other countries, they bucking up at one another. And there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. There's been more earthquakes than there's ever been. On any given day, it could be like two to 400 earthquakes in one day all over the earth. But y'all don't know it because y'all not occupied in prophecy. Y'all not looking at what's going on around the world. Most people is just focused on working, taking a vacation, having fun. They're not looking at, they're not looking at what's going on. Any day, there's hundreds of earthquakes when you caught them all over the world. A lot of them are small, but that doesn't matter. There's more earthquakes in diverse places. There's places that's having earthquakes that never had earthquakes before. There's volcanoes going off all over the world. Volcanoes that haven't erupted in forever. They going off now. Underwater volcanoes. It's, it's popping. Verse 8. Uh, these are the beginning of sorrows. So this war, these rumors of wars, um, the total collapse of society, these world leaders bucking up at one another, these earthquakes, these are the beginning of sorrows. So this is really just the beginning. The end, it's, it's not going to wrap up yet. World War Three will be the wrap up. This war is not nuclear yet, but once it morphs into a war war, it's going to go nuclear. But again, these are all the beginning of sorrows. And by all these scriptures here, we know that we're at the end and we can see it. And not only that, we know that it's this year. And we know that it's this year for one of a few reasons, because it's the roars and rumors of wars. Um, it's going to morph into a war war sooner or later. And then we know that uh, that uh, the economic system is about to collapse worldwide. So there's going to be a total collapse of society here in America in the coming weeks. But again, because we study the scriptures, we got a correct understanding of the Bible, we have a more sure word of prophecy, meaning we have a more sure word of the events that's happening now and the events that are going to happen in the near future. So we know what we're talking about. Then when we hit Isaiah chapter 13, verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. So a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, that's a war. So like in the old times, where you got all these people clashing, going to war, you hear swords colliding, armor being hit, people hollering, screaming, dying, that's a tumultuous noise, a noise of confusion or great distress. So that's what we're coming into now, is that tumultuous noise, all these countries bucking up one at another, preparing for this war. And what proves that this tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together is the preparation for World War III, because soon as we get to the next part of the scripture, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle, meaning the Lord is putting these key players in World War III in position and he's getting them ready and he's preparing them for the battle for this final battle and we see that right now russia been popping off at the u.s the u.s and nato been popping off at russia north korea to fire like seven missiles in like three weeks they've been firing off more missiles than any other than any other country in the world china making nuclear threats to america russia making nuclear threats to america all these countries talking real tough. Everybody want blood. 
and who else? Um, every all these countries got missiles. They got missiles by the hundreds of thousands. So it's going to be millions of missiles shot off, and that's in Revelation the ninth chapter. So again, the Lord of Hosts must earth gathering the hosts and appointing them for the battle. They come from a far country. Who comes from a far country? The hosts of the battle from one end of the earth to the other, from Russia to America, from South Africa to Brazil, from Israel to Japan. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, which would be the ends of the earth, even the Lord. So the Lord is going to be gathered for this battle. So this tells you if all these countries bucking up, one, bucking up at one another, getting ready for this war, then this tells you that the Lord must be already here, that he just ain't revealed himself yet that he's just waiting on the war to pop off, then he's going to show himself. And you can get that in Luke 12 and 49. But again, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, even he is being gathered with these other nations for the final battle and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. What is the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land? That's a nuclear weapon. So not only are these countries gathering their militaries together to go to war, but they're gathering their nuclear weapons as well. Because a nuclear weapon ain't something that you just keep in the closet somewhere. You got to keep it stored underground, underwater, deactivated. So when it's actually time for war, you got to bring it out of its storage place and get it activated. So even to fire off a nuclear weapon, there's some preparation that goes into that. That's why when it goes into the host of the battle being gathered together from all over the world, it states the Lord is being gathered here, but these weapons also have to be gathered. It's not something that you can just shoot. And this video here, let me see if I can find it real quick. And that's this video here that I've been showing lately. That uh, here's that Russia got caught moving these intercontinental ballistic missiles, and we see on the screen here's another one. They come from a far country, even from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of His indignation to destroy the whole land. So yeah. These weapons are being gathered together to destroy the whole land. And we know this whole land that's going to be destroyed is America, which is Babylon the Great. But because we got an understanding of the scriptures, we have also a more sure word of prophecy and a more sure word of things to come in the earth. We know exactly what's going to happen and we know exactly what we're talking about. We can't give you the exact date, but we can tell you what's going to happen. And for some people, that ain't good enough. Because you tell them what's going to happen, what's the first thing they say? Well, you don't know what day is going to be. We don't have to know what day. We know what's going to happen. And we believe it's going to happen. And we know it's this year. What good is it? Like, knowing the exact dates don't matter. Even if we did know the exact dates, you people still wouldn't take heed. Y'all still wouldn't prepare yourselves for the Lord and get yourselves in order. So... When y'all say, oh, you don't know the exact date, who cares? What would you do with it if you knew the exact date? If we could tell you, you wouldn't do nothing. So let's get on with the scriptures. All right, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Any cause of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This is the mandate because, look, he cause of all. So this is a mandate. Sloppy Joe been saying that a lot lately. We're going to cause all. We're going to do this. So all these mandates that we've been seeing over the past two years is leading up to this mandate. When he calls of all, when he mandates all to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And this is going to be a worldwide mandate. So all these social distancing mandates, mask mandates, uh, the VAX mandates, all these mandates is leading up to this. All the mandates is really practiced for this Revelation 13 to 16. Let's continue. And that no man, 
might buy or sell. That's a mandate that no man would be able to buy or sell, say if he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this is a mandate, and that's what we in the season in. Never in the history of Earth have we seen all these global mandates. But all these global mandates is going to morph into one big worldwide mandate under the New World Order. So this is another reason we know that it's got to be this year. All these countries is getting ready for this final war. They bucking up at another. These nuclear missiles is being transported to be activated, to be shot off. Um, earthquakes in diverse places. There's going to be a total economic collapse. The U.S. is on the verge of a, of the dollar collapsing. So that's going to collapse the society. There's going to be no rules, no law. There's going to be anarchy. So we know exactly what we're talking about. That's because we have a more short word of prophecy. Daniel 12 and 4, our final scripture. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the end of time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So what is this talking about? Shut up the words and seal the book. This is talking about the Bible. So the correct understanding, the correct knowledge and understanding of the Bible will be shut up until the end of time. Meaning our grandparents wasn't meant to get this correct understanding of the scriptures because it wasn't for that time. Now that we're at the end of time, lot knowledge is increasing. Knowledge of what? This is not science and technology. This is knowledge of the scriptures. Because knowledge and science and technology have been increasing over the past, you know, 80 years. But we haven't had this truth of the Bible for 80 years. But again, but thou, O Dan, you shut up the words and seal the book even to the end of time. Now that the words of the book, now that the seal of the book has been loosed, which is Revelation, the fifth chapter, that means we're at the end of time because only at the end of time, the very end, will we get the correct knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. Now that we got it, this signifies that we're at the end of time because the words of the book are supposed to be sealed to the end of time. The words, the knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures ain't sealed no more, so we're at the end. And knowledge is being increased. It's knowledge of the scriptures. So... From those few passages I showed, that's how we know we're at the end of time. But because we got the correct understanding, we have a more sure word of prophecy. So, the people who question us, y'all need to, uh, we, we know what we're talking about, but y'all don't. And my mom made a good point that they don't even know what they don't know. But we know what we know. And that's why we have a short word of prophecy. Because we know what we know and we know that it's accurate. Because it was written by the Lord himself. Now, America is going to be destroyed, and whether y'all believe it or not, it's going to happen. I advise everybody to take heed, like it says right underneath, where unto ye do well that ye take heed. Take heed from what? So you don't get caught up in this nuclear destruction. And that's what we see right here, this nuclear missile being moved. Y'all don't want to get caught up in that. So that's it for today. Until next time, shout around.